Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Jane Deco's Let's Play. Last time we started off with Victor on the fair. We did a few rounds uh, back and forth there until his credits got robbed by Sienna. Then we played a little bit with her. We ended up in the sewers and in the sewers we met Klein and Glenn. They fell down from the roof from I think the palace or someone inside the palace. We navigated through the sewers, we defeated the Kraken came up and then they panned back to Victor who's getting a lot of attention in the castle because as it turns out Victor isn't fully human he's like another race an archmage type of race and he has lived for over 500 years oh, okay so Victor and Bodomala have one of these I don't know if they're stewards or not um they're demi humans i guess or maybe just another race all entirely and there are a few other demi humans in here as well I hope they go a little bit more into depth into the political divisions or the different type of factions there are because so far um, we've been thrown into this game in a, at the end of a warlike era and now it's an intermediary piece but we don't know if it's gonna last long or what's gonna happen here so yeah I hope to explain a little bit more about the different kingdoms soon. Okay so here's some explanation. So the west is under a civil war and the east has a kingdom in the mountains. And then I think north is at a treaty with us right now. Then there still remains the southern kingdoms. That sounds like some sort of shady tactic to me, to be honest. Proposing a treaty and then falling ill. Ooh, what? What? Zacchaeus. Huh. Oh, so we're the south. It's not like we're central or something. Princess Amalia is too young to rule. Yeah, okay. The same political divisions as she has in the real world. I was thinking about the church. Oh, but to be honest... More of a business. Huh, okay. Okay, High Inquisitor. So the fact that they would have put this guy in here in this room with all the normal common people may be a slight indication towards the fact that he may be a future opponent. If I recall correctly, it was the ruler of Terran who is ill right now. And the prince as well as the king. So let's go into this magic topic a little bit more. our inquisitor sir raphael
I wonder what actually would happen if I choose the other dialogue options. But I don't want to save and reload to figure everything out. Okay, so we got a reward for seeing the right things. And we're back with Sienna. How, how did she... No, here's the thing I don't understand. So she went up into the upper courtyard, but how did she get there? Like, what happened? Where are the other guys? Oh, shit. And there's no to save function as well, I see. Sweets. Yeah, wow. Because we really needed those. And then there's some puzzle-like chest we need to get as well. So. First up should be to interact with everything. And see what I missed. I can't move anything around at first sight. Hmm. Do I return? No. Aha! Thank you for the loot. Oh boy, there's more. Uh, seems like an event. No! Seriously, I didn't get the rest? Ah, some key players meet up. So the princess is undercover and instead of tracking her general, who's doing shady things, she's tracking some people she doesn't know while still being undercover in the castle. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. This can't be good.
China, of course. So we got five key actors here. Now we need Victor and his attendant. And then maybe the, also the other princess. That's eight people. Seems like big enough for a party. Heinlein. It's one of those shadow thingies. A demon. Buffs and debuffs durations freeze while switched out. Okay, that seems fair enough. Otherwise, it would be a little bit of an overpowered mechanic, seeing as you can just switch without it costing any action. So let's take care of the little ones. We can have a party of up to eight people, and we are currently with six people. I am still missing one princess and one other actor. Okay, let me just check if we have healers in our current setup. Yes, seems good enough. Magic attacks, elemental attacks, AoE attacks, offensive buffs. This seems like a good um, balance. We have skill points to learn skills, of course. It's a debuff, lent energy. I'm gonna invest in some passive skills. Now let's do the same for all the other characters. Up our passive resistances. Save TP. I mean, a 5% chance is pretty good. Raise attack. And inact resistance. Counter cure. Wow. 30% chance to counter single target physical attacks by curing a random ailment. That seems very cool. Heavy armor bonus. I don't know if we have heavy armor equipped already, but... Then mind up because he's a sorcerer and we might need these magic skills in the long run. Agility up uh, and beast killer. Undead killer and dragon killer, interesting. Um, we're not gonna... Okay, so we can choose them all. Nice. So, I don't know if it's just me, if I'm like a slow learner or if I'm just thick or something, but I can't seem to figure out how and when they earn skill points because I can't seem to find a leveling system in here. If there is a 
actual leveling system. Um. Yeah, no, probably not. Switch with your partner as often as possible. It would help us control our overdrive. Uh. So we have our enemies um, weak against water. She ain't staggered, so I'm just gonna keep on weakening this one. Oh, because of the stagger, I should have switched him out. Damn it. Okay, so I got three skill points. I don't know. Another door and another corridor. Um, we're just gonna take another door first. Titan helmet. So, a piece of equipment again. I remember that um, the priest got some bonus from heavy armory, and it would be beneficial if he didn't die as fast. So, we're gonna give him the helmet. Okay, so now that there's three of them, um, let's just wrap this up with an ultra move. Please, high physical damage to all enemies, yeah, sure. Wow, <laughs> okay, that was cool. Maybe a small thing I still want to say about the whole upload of the series is that um, at the moment I have only uploaded one part per week, but I would actually like to upload more, at least two parts per week. Oh, so she sacrificed herself, wow. Um, so starting next week I will try recording more often so that I can finish this whole playthrough by the end of February at least because um, putting out one part a week it'll take a whole lot of time before I get to the end of the story and six angel wings so it's great for a party of this size I'm guessing the next battle is really gonna be a tough one huh. okay wow I mean, man, look at look at this view with the scenery. Background storytelling that this game has. It takes me back to the Chrono Trigger vibes that I was looking for, and uh, I'm really enjoying this. Four in a row now. Huh. Starting off with the Fagba.
course, he's the traitor. So now for sure boss battle time. Yeah, of course. Maybe put another merchant here. Let's save up. We fight. At least killing in the situation. So, okay. His weakness is still water. Deals high. Her ultra move is dealing high non elemental magic damage to all enemies. I think I'd rather have poison for the moment. Okay, then with Glenn we do the ultra move. It deals physical damage to all enemies and reduces attack, magic, defense and mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hit him. Okay, now we buff ourselves with Victor. I just saw the 5% TP save kick in. So we made the right choice for a passive skill for Killian. So now I'm gonna boost myself with this. Keep extending the armor break. After that we're gonna reapply the poison and then switch rub out for Linne to do maximum damage. Can't, okay, so when one of the characters dies, I can't switch them out anymore? Is that how it works? We're gonna keep on buffing ourselves and trying to debuff this guy. Because I don't know how much health he has and I don't want to fuck this up and do this all over again. Well, actually, I wouldn't mind, but still. Efficient progress and all.
There we are, the sky armors. So what country do the, those belong to? Is it our country? Or are they from the north? Just like that, we got blasted once again. We're not even three hours into this game and we got blasted like three times already. What a bromance. Huh. Would Glenn be the new owner of the Krimar? Would it be embodied within him? Could it be the mage who's talking to him? Rob? Did we lose him? Huh, okay, he's safe. And on that note, we're going to end it here for today, guys. Thank you all very much for checking in. I hope you liked the series so far. Uh, leave a like or a comment down below so I can know how you all appreciate the series. And I'll see you in the next part. Take care. Bye.